Hello, welcome back to our NPTEL course on scanning electron, ion and probe microscopy in material characterization. In last couple of classes, we are discussing about the additional capabilities of scanning electron microscope. Scanning electron microscope not only used for the analysis or examining the topology of the sample surface, but it can, uh, it can also be used for several other purposes. In that regard, we have discussed on energy dispersive X-ray analysis, where which is used to measure elemental composition and all then we, were, we started discussing on some other capabilities of SEM. Uh, particularly, we began discussing on the crystallographic information. SEM can also be used to obtain uh, the crystallographic information of this specimen. We discussed about the channeling pattern, which is used to know whether the specimen is crystalline or amorphous as per the patterns it gives. Uh, in these days, uh, no more the channeling pattern is used, but rather it is been replaced by another technique, similar technique called electron backscatter diffraction pattern. So, here uh, the backscattered electrons are diffracted from the specimen when there is uh, the condition Bragg condition is fulfilled. As we know, uh, backscattered electrons provides us the phase information and the yield of the backscattered electron coefficient increases significantly with increase in the atomic number also. Not only the uh, backscattered uh, electron coefficient increases with atomic number, but also uh, the yield of the backscattered electron depends upon the crystal orientation and they would form a specific or a regular pattern and from that regular pattern we can able to tell about the crystallographic orientation, texture of the specimen and also the crystal crystal phase of the material. So, how this um, uh, EBST or electron backscatter diffraction pattern is measured? First uh, electron beam certainly will be incidenting on this specimen. So, it is a stationary electron beam. It is incidenting on the specimen where the specimen is tilted to a very high angle. Here the specimen tilting is about 70 degree. It is about 70 degree. Specimen is tilted 70 degree and whence electron beam is incident on the specimen and tilted specimen, then if the material is crystalline, it would diffract, it will diffract the backscattered electrons in a particular fashion. It would exactly will um, be deflected in a conical fashion providing a large uh, flat con cons of intensity above the specimen. So, if we have uh, an atomic plane, then the diffraction would produce uh, two cons, one from the top of the atomic plane and another from the bottom of the atomic plane when uh, it satisfies the Bragg condition. And those planes uh, will, uh, this diffraction or the formation of the conical intensity would tell us the despacing or atomic spacing of the specimen. What you see here in this right side diagram, uh, this is a part of the, and this is a part of this uh, con and these lines are called Kikuchi lines. And because uh, they are quite uh, large with a very large apex angle, that is why they will appear on the image plane as a flat lines, uh, it has an angle of right 90 degree minus theta b, where theta b is the Bragg angle. Normally, it is the electron beam incidenting, so therefore, lambda that is wavelength is very small and this theta b is normally less than 2 degree. So, with a very large angle, this conical intensity formed above the specimen. 
and by collecting those diffraction on a phosphorus screen, we would able to know uh, which crystal plane uh, diffraction from which crystal planes um, uh, is occurring and therefore, the crystal structure. So, so you see uh, um, here in the next uh, uh, slide here you see here like a typical electron backscatter diffraction pattern. Uh, th in this diffraction pattern what we see uh, there is there are several uh, parallel lines in addition to the bands. Uh, these parallel lines for example, let us say this is one line, this is one line, this is another line these are Kikuchi line, two parallel lines from one particular planes. Similarly, another parallel lines from another particular planes and uh, there is a specific uh, width of this uh, band and this width can tell, uh, tell us about the interplanar spacing or D spacing. Larger the width of this band, smaller will be the D spacing because it follows the um, Bragg's law that is n lambda is equal to uh, where it follows the Bragg's law let us say and these two planes the angle between these two planes or two lines is 2 theta b that is what we have discussed uh, 90 degree minus theta b and when uh, and it, in addition to that this diffraction pattern al uh, also provides lot of inter uh, intersection like that it, that we see here this is an intersection this is an intersection and this is an intersection this intersection tells about the zone axis and nothing but the crystallographic orientation of the crystal and the line pairs these line pairs tells about the planes of the crystal structure and as I said the width of these lines is inversely proportional to the uh, uh, this, uh, inversely proportional to the atomic spacing, spacing in the plane. Uh, as uh, the IBST pattern is a angular, map, uh, angular map, map of the crystal, the distance between any pairs of this Kikuchi line is related to Bragg angle of those planes. So, so the decrease in the D spacing D will increase the Bragg angle. Bragg angle. Similarly, uh, if the if the acceleration voltage for example, if the acceleration voltage is increases as you see here is the uh, EBST pattern of Fe 2 or 3 uh, that uh, those were collected uh, at two different acceleration voltage. Uh, a is 10 kilo electron volts whereas B is 30 kilo electron volt. Then we see that uh, uh, in the right side these bands or these lines are more close to each other these Kikuchi lines are more close to each other they are, uh, and the width of these bands are uh, smaller. This is because the um, because uh, at a higher acceleration voltage of 30 kilo electron volt uh, lambda will decrease and lambda is decrease means the D will increase we should therefore, see the thinner band in the EBST pattern. So, that is what we notice here in the EBST pattern of iron oxide. More importantly all the crystals will form a different type of pattern and from those this pattern we would able to simulate uh, with uh, simulate uh, to which crystal structure uh, these patterns are um, matching and that's telling uh, that's able to know about the crystal structure of the uh, specimen or material. So, it gives all uh, structural parameters of this specimen and therefore, we can determine the crystal structure orientation of individual grain. But more um, one important things to notice here that in this case also the specimen size should be larger in the micrometer range on the uh, otherwise uh, we would not able to get uh, enough uh, signal 
because once the electron beam incident on the specimen, the interaction volume is quite large because here the specimen is tilted to a large angle. Therefore, the interaction volume near the surface would be uh, much higher. The, that the information or the diffracted um, backscattered electron will be diffracted from a relatively large area. So, it would not able to give us the uh, pattern from a nanocrystalline material. So, the, the grains or crystallites should be at least in the micron sense, micron range to um, clearly gives a pattern for a particular crystal structure. Particularly, this is more important for metallurgical sample, geological sample, where the grain size are much larger uh, and therefore, giving us the uh, mapping of uh, the grains with different orientation. This is a orientation of mapping images, image of uh, the electro deposited uh, nickel. So, this is a cross sectional image as you see uh, from the EBST pattern for the EBST pattern this mapping is uh, created this map is created how uh, from the EBST pattern it is one can know about uh, the orientation of individual grains and crystal and accordingly a particular color is uh, given uh, in this cases uh, this what the maroon and yellow type of color is given for 0 0 1 orientation of uh, of the of the crystal 0 0 orientation it is given a, a maroon or yellow type of color. On the other hand when the grains are with a orientation of 1 1 1 they were given a bluish color similarly for other uh, 1 0 1 another color is given. So, from the these colors we can tell that which grains are of which orientation and how they are. Um, placed inside the uh, how these grains are distributed inside the specimen. This is a cross sectional image uh, the A is that uh, edge deposited nickel B and C are the samples and held at 400 and 500 degree centigrade. As we see with increasing the annealing temperature the blue colors uh, or the grains with orientation of uh, 111 is increasing uh, suggesting that upon annealing the crystal orientation started to keep on changing with uh, um, with the orientation of 111 uh, grains or crystals are increasing with increasing the annealing temperature. This type of information uh, or distribution can only be obtained through this type of orientation mapping because in the X-ray diffraction studies or in other ki kind of analysis we would get the bulk information uh, indicating the presence of both the planes orientation but it would not able to tell us how uh, the distribution of uh, these grains with different orientation. So, from this scanning electron microscope with a EBST detector from the EBST pattern the orientation mapping can be done. Similarly, if there is different crystal phases for example, there is another uh, cases uh, if there is a different crystal phases for example, here it is a weld uh, in the stainless steel, uh, it is, this is a weld cross section which has uh, failed in a brittle manner uh, due to um, due to the uh, high temperature uh, exposure and the microstructure uh, from the left side that is a uh, secondary electron image. Uh, we could see some of the precipitate here in uh, the precipitates that you see here, these are precipitates, some of the precip precipitates and when the EBST pattern was collected from these precipitates, those precipitates are found to match with the tetragonal crystal structure of uh, uh, Fe chromium these things, these, these precipitates are the tetragonal crystal structure of iron chromium. On the other hand in other places the matrix these are like iron, Fe chromium and nickel. So, the formation of the precipitates uh, leads to the failure of the uh, this weld due to high temperature exposure and the, this, that was due to the formation of iron chromium uh, tetragonal crystal structure that has been measured from this middle one is the 
uh, exact uh, uh, EBSD pattern and then this EBSD pattern was uh, matched with the simulated pattern that is found to be quite overlay with the experimentally measured EBSD pattern indicating or confirming the phase of the um, crystalline material. In this way, we can do the phase analysis use, uh, using the uh, EBSD uh, measurement. So, in addition to the crystallographic information, we have some other capabilities of the scanning electron microscope those we will briefly discuss. Uh, first let the specimen current uh, detectors, specimen current detectors means here the word uh, specimen current mean specimen current. We have like different type current that is measured in a uh, scanning electron microscope for example, uh, we have beam current that is IB, IB is equal to we have secondary electron emission ISC current due to secondary electrons, we have current due to backscattered electron BSC and we could also have current due to specimen SC. So, when incident beam is irradiated on the sample it has a particular beam current and it would produ produce secondary electrons giving us the surface morphology of the sample and also the backscattered electrons provides other information. Now, this backscattered electrons is also related to the channeling and um, EBSD pattern. Now, if, if we have a crystal that has uh, that is the electrons the backscattered electrons are diffracted, backscattered electrons are diffracted then the specimen current will be less when they follow Bragg's law they will be diffracted. So, specimen current will be less. Specimen current is the current that flows across the specimen to the ground, across the specimen to the ground. So, now if more diffraction is occurring or less channeling is occurring then, uh, then the specimen current will be high. On the other hand, uh, if, uh, if the if the there is no diffraction or less diffraction or more channeling of the incident beam, incident beam then we can have a more of specimen current. So, it is nothing but uh, is a alternative opposite to the backscattered electron signal. So, this would also produce the specimen current can also produce a pattern and from that pattern we could able to also uh, get a contrast telling about knowing about the um, materials under investigation or to be under examination. So, specimen current detectors by using a specimen current by how much current we measured that is flowing through the specimen to the ground we would able to tell uh, about uh, the uh, materials properties. Then we have a magnetic contrast, then we have magnetic con contrast uh, which can be used to get an idea about the magnetic domains present in the sample. So, there are uh, uh, like we have uh, um, let us say we have a magnetic sample and electron beam incident on the sample. Uh, in case of magnetic sample uh, each of these uh, crystals or uh, grains magnetic domains can, ha can have a certain magnetic moment and that magnetic moments uh, can, uh, will have a particular uh, direction direction of the moment and the electron um, uh, magnetic moment of the electrons may align to the crystallographic orientation with a particular crystallographic orientation every crystal have a particular crystallographic orientation and uh, that is called e g axis for example, cobalt it is cobalt is a uh, uniaxial uh, crystals where the crystal there is one crystallographic orientation. Now, if the magnetic moment is aligned with that EG axis, then magnetic flux, uh, magnetic flux uh, will lie normal to this surface of the specimen, and the there will be there will be a uh, leakage of magnetic flux from the surface of the specimen. And now, once uh, uh, electron beam incident on the specimen, and then secondary electrons are ejected from the specimen, the magnetic flux of the magnetic domains can align 
with the secondary electrons or may not align with the secondary electrons. For example, there are two type of cases, uh, two type of magnetic constant. One is type 1 magnetic constant, uh, ma type 1 magnetic con contrast and type 1 magnetic contrast arises when, when the secondary electrons that are emitted from the specimen align with the align with the leakage magnetic field from the specimen surface. Here uh, the uh, like uh, the due to the magnetic uh, moment uh, or magnetic field there will be a Lorentz force, there will be a Lorentz force that is f is equal to q v b. That Lorentz force of the magnetic domain uh, will accelerate the secondary electrons that is being emitted from this specimen and it can increase its velocity and also uh, it can have its directional component. So, so, once secondary electrons are emitted, if the magnetic domains have a magnetic flux align, align, aligning with the secondary electrons, that would facilitate uh, the removal of secondary electrons and when more number of, uh, then, then it would lead to increase in the number of secondary electron yield or secondary electron um, production. Thus, those area where the magnetic moment is aligning with the with the magnetic flux or leakage uh, le magnetic flux leakage direction, those area will be appearing as a bright. On the other hand, when the magnetic domains or magnetic moments align in opposite direction of the secondary electrons, then those area will appear as a darker contrast. So, what you see in the middle uh, middle figure. Uh, in the middle figure that you see here uh, that is uh, the type 1 magnetic constant from a square wave recorded on magnetic tape. We could see uh, brighter, brighter and darker contrast on this photograph that was taken uh, when ET detector was positively biased. Positively biased means we collect both secondary and backscattered electrons, particularly more number of uh, secondary electrons will be collected. And as you see here, the brighter portion is the portion where more number of secondary electrons are collected. On the other hand, other region where the magnetic flux or magnetic domain, uh, magnetic moments of those domain, crystal domains align in opposite direction to the secondary electrons. Therefore, the yield of the secondary electrons in this region, secondary electron yield is lower. So, delta will be less here delta more. So, in this way we see the different of brightness and darkness contrast telling us the magnetic moments inside the crystalline material uh, in inside the magnetic material. In the right side diagram here this is a back scattered electron detector uh, that is a de e detector with a negatively biased uh, negatively biased detector it is biased uh, as it is biased negatively it would not collect any secondary electrons as it would not collect any secondary electrons therefore the contrast is or brightness is uniform because we, we are not collecting the secondary electrons at all here therefore uh, all the places we have a uniform brightness uh, across the across the sample uh, without giving us information regarding the magnetic domains and their orientation this is about type 1 magnetic contrast. There is another type of contrast, uh, yes this is an, an another example uh, of the magnetic contrast here what you see in the A that is A is a uh, ill lens detector image of a bulk of iron PT alloy, iron PT alloy um, image A as you see there is certainly uh, difference in the brightness uh, contrast telling us the 3D features of the specimen. Then second one uh, B is a, a surface topography. Here you see uh, some black dots. Those are actually uh, actually um, form du during the polishing. Those are not anything called magnetic points or magnetic domains. And C is a magnetic force MFF image, magnetic force microscopic image that clearly saw uh, some of the uh, spots. Those are uh, certainly of different magnetic formats as compared to the background. Uh, background of the specimen and D is a surface topography image obtained by ET detector with a negative label bias that means it is a backscattered electron image, backscattered electron image giving us 
uh, the surface topography here. Now, you see the difference between backscattered uh, image D and the ET detector image obtained with a positive bias 250 and this is both in the same area. Uh, in case of uh, D, the backscattered uh, electron uh, image, uh, we do not see any brightness contrast difference to an extent and these spots are due to uh, the due to uh, due, during the polishing these are created, but in the E image what we see there is a clear cut brightness contrast difference. These region as you see more darker more darker indicating here in this region uh, magnetic flux the magnetic flux uh, is in the opposite direction to the emission of the secondary electrons and here F is a again in lens detector image clearly showing the domain walls and spotty uh, reverse pattern and in this uh, in this E and F also you can see these spots spots small small spots which are little bit of darker. So, those indicate this brighter region of magnetic force microscopy image and G is a uh, schematic illustration of how the domain structure aligned or uh, distributed inside the specimen. This is about the magnetic contrast of the specimen of type 1. And in type 2, uh, we, we can also have the magnetic field inside the specimen which once the electron beam penetrated into the specimen, once the electron beam penetrated into the specimen, then the magnetic field inside the specimen can direct the beam towards the surface or away from the surface. If it directs the electron beam towards the surface, we will collect more number of backscatter electrons, then, th then those region or those uh, grains magnetic domains will appear brighter. On the other hand, if the magnetic field of that domain direct in opposite direction, then those region will appear as a darker or indicating uh, the different, uh, uh, different direction of the magnetic moment. And this way, we can also differentiate uh, that is what you see here the difference of magnetic contrast of a iron and 3 percent silicon transformer steel. This is a flat surface, but the uh, brightness and darkness difference telling us uh, about different domains, uh, magnetic domains in the crystal. We can have also voltage contrast. In case of voltage contrast, what happens that uh, it, uh, for example, our secondary electrons are uh, emitted and secondary electrons have an energy of around uh, 3 to 5 electron volt, most of the secondary electron, the secondary electrons have energy of 3 to 5 electron volt. Now, if we put a screen over the specimen and apply uh, let us say minus 7.5 volt, then all the secondary electrons of energy of 3 to 5 electron volts will be rejected because we are applying a much higher negative voltage. So, then in the left side image is without bias. So, the screen is placed with a biasing of minus 7 pipe. Therefore, we are rejecting all the secondary electrons uh, emitted from the specimen. But if we have a let us say a semiconducting chip or a IC, um, uh, IC chip uh, IC integrated chip and then uh, two uh, IC chip have many uh, uh, um, IC chip have uh, many, uh, many interconnects and also uh, the uh, many interconnects and also we have the uh, conducting lines. And if we apply uh, uh, let us say minus 7.5 bias to partic particular elements of a uh, integrated chip, then what will happen that in from those area those conducting lines the electrons which are emitted will not be rejected by the screen above the specimen. As the electrons will not be rejected electrons emitted from the, the, those conducting lines or those elements in the integrated chip will not be rejected by the screen. They will pass through the screen. They will be uh, observed by the detector, and we will know. We will know we, from which area electrons are emitted. If let's say a conducting lines or a conducting wires or a particular elements, there is a breakage or failure. There is a breakage and failure. So the uh, when we apply the bias, it will not pass through that, and therefore we can see the discontinuity of the contrast uh, in the specimen and that is knowing the position at which the breakage or occurs or failure occurs. This is what called uh, voltage contrast. 
we can, we also do electron beam induced current measurements using can can also we can also do electron beam induced current measurement using the scanning electron microscope as the name suggests ebiis that is what nothing but uh, electron beam induced current electron beam induced current it is used to measure the electrical defects body junction doping level diffusion length minority carriers inside semiconductor now once electron beam is incident on a specimen it will create many electron hole pairs if the semi if the material is semiconductor so once it creates many electron and hole pairs those electron hole pairs will recombine uh, in picosecond um, if but if we apply a potential difference across the electrode or across the specimen then those electron holes will be dragged apart and we can measure the current we can measure the current and from by measuring the current we can create an image from which region current is flowing and from which region current is not flowing and that image can tell us about the defects present in the sam sample or nothing but where the recombination occurs. So, here what you see a secondary electron image and here you see a backscattered electron image these region or darker region or these region where you see that no emission is that means there is a different contrast is nothing but where the recombination is occurring where the recombination is occurring or current is not flowing. So, by measuring the induced current the current which is induced by the incident beam we would able to detect the electrical defects or recombination site or other information. Similarly, if the dropping level is more the brightness will, uh, will be different if, the, if dropping level more means conductivity is more dropping level less means conductivity will less accordingly the brightness will vary we can uh, we can have different dropping levels in different region and we can measure similarly diffusion length lifetime of the minority carrier all these parameters can be measured through the electron beam induced current measurement in an SEM in a SEM. We have another uh, important things that uh, is normally studied uh, in the scanning electron microscope is cathode illuminations. Cathode illumination is nothing but when electron beam bombarded on the specimen then it would create electron hole pairs and those electron hole pairs will recombine producing the light or luminescence and that is by measuring the light uh, illuminated from the specimen we can know which light uh, which wavelength light is emitted and that is uh, the band gap of that specimen. So, here for example, a nano wires is there uh, it is a type of nano wires and that nano wires that is a gallium arsenide nano wires in the left side here what you see it is gallium arsenide nano wires here is a gallium arsenide nano wires electron beam falls on this gallium arsenide nano wires and it will produce electron hole pair and that will they will recombine and produce the light and this is the cathode illuminations uh, spectra that spectra spectra tell us about uh, the uh, l uh, light emitted from the specimen and this peak this peak wherever the uh, the intensity uh, which is maximum or emission is maximum that indicates about the band gap of the material in this case it is gallium arsenide so band gap is around uh, 1.42 uh, or 46 uh, electron volt so so cathode illuminations uh, also varies with the color uh, and we can able to know uh, about from the color of the um, uh, light emitted uh, we would uh, um, also do the mapping from which region uh, which uh, uh, wavelength light are emitted. So, uh, this this is called cathode illuminescence band and the peak tells about the energy uh, band uh, energy band gap. Uh, so, this type of illuminescence measurement can also uh, gives us the impurity level uh, because these impurity levels also will change the illuminescence properties and that does this kind of uh, cathode lumen study is highly used for, for, for optoelectronic application. Yes, so, in conclusion, so we have here uh, uh, what we have uh, found that uh, a scanning electron microscope uh, is used for many can be used for many purpose provided we, we have suitable uh, detector is attached primarily uh, though we examine the surface topology with a resolution better than 1 nanometer with uh, field emission scanning electron microscope. Uh, 
but uh, uh, with suitable detectors we can study the structural property that means material is crystalline or amorphous and if the crystalline uh, what type of crystal structure grain orientation similarly electronic properties such as uh, electronic properties such as defects etc can be studied optical properties such as cathode illuminations uh, can be studied so these are the, the, these are the different uh, type of uh, uh, studies that can be done with scanning electron microscope The reference book is this and thank you.